Hello everyone, and welcome to the show. Today we'll be taking a look at School Rumble's English manga release. But before we get to the manga itself, we'll cover the company that published it, Del Rey Manga, whose history probably goes back further than you might expect. In 1952, Ian and Betty Ballantine founded Ballantine Books. Over the next couple of decades, they established themselves as a major publisher of fantasy and science fiction novels, but they also dabbled in comics and more humorous books. The company was eventually acquired by Random House in 1973, and shortly afterwards, we start to hear names that School Rumble fans may be more familiar with. In 1977, Ballantine Books decided to establish a new imprint. Side note, an imprint is an alternate name that larger publishers use to publish books under. Companies use imprints to publish specific types of books, like fantasy, cooking, nonfiction, etc., under a new brand, which can help them in marketing those books to interested readers. This imprint was founded by two editors, Lester Del Rey and Judy Lynn Del Rey, and was given the name Del Rey Books. As far as our story is concerned, nothing major happens for several decades, until in 2003, Random House struck a deal with Kodansha to establish a partnership in Japan. The two companies would base their new co-venture in Tokyo, and it was given the name Random House Kodansha, with books planned to be released in late 2003 or 2004. According to Random House's chairman, Peter Olson, this was a part of their strategy to be a major player in every language market, with Japan making up about 10% of the world book market at the time. In 2004, Delray Books established a new imprint called Delray Manga, and released their first four Kodansha titles, Mobile Suit Gundam Seed, Negima Magister Negimaki, Tsubasa Reservoir Chronicle, and Triple X Holic. Their efforts were immediately successful, with Negima and Tsubasa becoming the two best-selling manga of the year in the United States. They closed out 2004 by releasing seven more titles, and became the fourth largest manga publisher in the US. The success continued into the following year, where they won the Top New Manga Publisher of the Year award from ICV2 and AnimeOnDVD.com, and had over one million manga in print by the end of spring, as a part of their efforts to expand their lineup. In 2006, Delray Manga released the first volume of Jin Kobayashi's manga School Rumble on February 28th. The series was released very consistently, with a new volume coming out every few months for the next few years. That changed after volume 13 was released on September 29, 2009. After that, something seemed off, because even six months later, there was no news about when the next volume would be released. But this wasn't that surprising if you knew what was going on at the time. Let's jump back to 2008. Ever since their partnership with Random House began, Kodansha has had a large presence in the North American manga market, and over the past several years, people had suspected that they might try to jump into the market directly, putting an end to their partnerships with American publishers like Random House and Tokyopop. The speculation only intensified when Kodansha allowed many of their licenses to expire. Kodansha's interest in publishing in the United States was confirmed on July 1, 2008, when they established Kodansha USA. Kodansha USA was created as a holding company, and Kodansha planned to create a subsidiary in New York, transfer its copyrights to it, and use it to sell manga in the U.S. themselves. On various corners of the internet, people speculated that, with Kodansha's impending entry into the market, that they might pull licenses from publishers like Delray Manga. Dallas Madow, an associate publisher at Delray Manga, addressed these concerns the same day that Kodansha made their announcement. So the news is out. Kodansha has formed its U.S. office. This has been the subject of a lot of speculation over the past couple of weeks, with people making all sorts of predictions based on very little information. And I suppose I really shouldn't blame those speculators. All they had to go on were some anonymous comments out there on the internet. Well, it's business as usual at Delray Manga. We're continuing to license manga from Kodansha, and as has been stated elsewhere, we've just about wrapped up our licenses for 2009, and we are now starting to work on 2010. In a few weeks at the San Diego Comic Con, we'll be announcing some of these new licenses, and we've got some really exciting new manga series planned. Then we'll have a few more announcements at the New York Anime Festival in September, pretty much like we've always done. Also, we will continue to publish all of our manga. Kodansha has not pulled any licenses back from us. 2009 is a big year for us, since it will mark our fifth anniversary. More on that later. But suffice it to say that we plan to keep publishing manga for the foreseeable future. It took a little while for Kodachi USA to get going, but in October of 2009, their office in New York was established and they announced a new imprint, Kodansha Comics, that would handle their manga. They also announced that it would be distributed by their longtime partner, Random House. As for Delray Manga, as Dallas said, things appear to be progressing normally. For example, School Rumble had been releasing at about the same pace that it always had been. Kodansha's statements also seemed to reinforce what Delray Manga had said the previous year. According to the head of Kodansha USA, Yoshiro Ire, Kodansha Comics doesn't aim to be the exclusive labels for titles from Kodansha. However, despite these assurances, their actions appeared to be contradictory. On August 31, 2009, 
Bridget Alverson of Manga Blog, reported that Kodansha didn't renew Tokyo Pop's licenses. The Japanese publisher Kodansha, from whom Tokyo Pop has licensed many terrific series over the years, Shobits, Lapina, Samurai Deep Rokyo, Rave Master, Initial D, Kendaichi, Life, Get Backers, and Love Attack, to name a few, has decided to let all existing contracts with Tokyo Pop expire on the manga series that they have licensed to us. As a result, Kodansha will not renew any licenses with Tokyo Pop for any new manga volumes. What does this mean? Tokyo Pop will not be allowed to complete the publication of any series that is currently in progress. In addition, Tokyo Pop will not be allowed to reprint these titles after the current inventory has been sold out. So once these series are sold out at retail, they will not be available for consumers to purchase. The reasons for Kodansha's decision were not communicated to Tokyo Pop. And this wasn't the first time that Tokyo Pop's licenses weren't renewed. In January, Kodansha did the same thing to Tokyo Pop Germany. Fortunately for them, Kodansha titles didn't make up a large portion of their sales. And even though it wasn't good news, Tokyo Pop, like many people speculating on the internet, weren't completely surprised. According to the marketing manager, Kaisa Picars, it wasn't completely unexpected as we haven't licensed anything new from Kodansha in quite some time. What surprised us most was that they canceled the licenses for series that were almost finished, such as Samurai Deep Rokyo and Raid Master. From a fan and collector's perspective, that doesn't make sense to us. Tokyo Pop, like their German counterpart, had also diversified their offerings, so the loss of these licenses wouldn't have a large effect on their business. At one time, a majority of what we published were series from Kodansha. If that were still the case, we would be in a lot of trouble. But a few years ago, we diversified the means by which we obtained content, which included reducing our exposure to just a handful of Japanese partners. Since then, we have licensed only a handful of new series from Kodansha, while continuing to publish continuing volumes from some of the most popular series. This announcement has little bearing on Tokyo Pop's current or future stability. But for the fans, the uncertainty of knowing when some of their favorite series will finish is a big blow. For some fans, hope wasn't lost, because over the past several months, Delray Manga, Random House, and Dark Horse had all announced plans to finish publishing some of the titles originally licensed to Tokyo Pop, but that would only cover a small number of the titles that were now out of print. The day of the announcement, Tokyo Pop listed every book that was now out of print, and the number came up to 772. As for School Rumble, after a long wait, fans will be rewarded with a surprise. Instead of receiving one volume, Delray Manga would be releasing the next three volumes, volumes 14 through 16, in an omnibus. Volumes 14 through 16 would be released on July 27, 2010, and unfortunately, would be the last volume of the manga to be physically released in English. In August of 2010, a series of incidents caused people to worry if Delray Manga was in trouble. Their marketing director, Ali Cockman, was let go. Their website was replaced by one being operated by their parent company, and several customers had received word that their pre-orders had been canceled. Bridget Alverson, now writing for Comic Book Resources or CBR, reached out to Random House to ask them about their future publishing in manga. Thanks for inquiring about our manga program. Let me assure you that Random House plans to be in the manga business for years to come, and our program overall remains strong and steady. You may recall that we moved a few series into the omnibus format, which has made it appear to some that we've drastically reduced our list, but we're still publishing roughly the same number of pages of manga each year. The Delray Manga site has been merged into our Suvudu site, which, if anything, has increased our updates for DelrayManga.com, a site which had remained static for way too long. Our commitment to graphic novels remained strong, but things didn't get any better. In September, Andre Poplow of Curiosity pointed out that there weren't any Delray Manga titles listed in Diamond Previews, which is a monthly catalog of upcoming releases for various media, including comics, manga, and graphic novels. They also reported that there weren't any listings for new Delray Manga titles on Amazon after November. When they reached out for clarification, they received the following statement. Thanks for your email. I'm sorry, but we have no comment at this time. When CBR reached out to Dallas Madow asking a similar question, they received a similar response. The next month, on October 3rd, 2010, a Kodansha and Random House press release detailed their new partnership agreement. Kodansha Limited and Random House Incorporated have announced their plans to change and expand their manga publishing relationship in North America. The companies are shifting from a licensing relationship to a sales and distribution arrangement as of December 1st, 2010. Under the new arrangement, Kodansha subsidiary Kodansha USA Publishing, LLC, established in 2008 and led by Yoshio Ire, will be publishing Kodansha-originated manga themselves, directly in the US English language market, with strong support from Random House Publisher Services, or RHPS, Random House's third-party distribution division. Basically, Kodansha USA would be taking over all of the publishing rights for their titles in North America, and Random House would shift from a publisher and distributor to just distributor. As for Delray Manga, their existing licenses would be taken over on a per-title basis. If that doesn't sound like a guarantee that they'd continue publishing all of the ongoing series that Delray Manga was licensing, that's because it wasn't. At the time of this announcement, there were 33 titles in print by the now-defunct manga publisher that hadn't been completed, including School Rumble. And that was the end of Delray Manga. But to clarify, it was just Delray Manga that shut down. Delray Books, the imprint of Ballantine Books, still exists to this day. 
The only thing that closed was the imprint of an imprint that's the subsidiary of another company that merged with another company before eventually being bought by an even bigger company. But getting back on track, the future of School Rumbles and the other series' English releases were in doubt. And several years passed without any news of this series continuing or being re-released. And when Kodansha USA was asked about bringing the series back, they said that they weren't really interested in doing licensed rescues. Actually, when they were asked about the possibility of releasing the remaining volumes in 2013, they said that they no longer had the license, and they said the same thing two years later. However, in June of 2016, someone named Yafada was scrolling through iTunes and saw something interesting. Kodansha had listed four manga that were previously released by Del Rey Manga. Alive, Narume Kantebele, Princess Resurrection, and School Rumble. The listing included the first 13 volumes of the series, with the first one scheduled to release on July 26, 2016. And just like that, School Rumble was back. The books rolled out quickly over the next few months. By December 6th, every volume that had been published by Del Rey Manga had been re-released as an ebook, starting next week. Fans would be able to continue reading a series that many thought would never be officially translated. And on December 13th, 2016, School Rumble Volume 17 was released, continuing the English translation of a series that had been on hold for more than six years. While the pace of the releases would slow, new volumes were consistently released over the next year, with the 22nd and final volume being released on August 15th, 2017. Just like in the last episode of The Shelf, I reached out to people who were involved in the translation process. One of the people that I got in contact with was Alex Keller Nelson, the translator for volumes 19 through 22. Who translated the other volumes? The first 16 volumes were all translated and adapted by William Flanagan, and volumes 17 and 18 were translated by Valerie Cushing, who had to step away from the project for unknown reasons. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to get in contact with either of them. The other person I was able to get in contact with was Andrew Copeland, who is the series letterer from volume 18 onwards. As for what a letterer does, a letterer takes a translation translation and essentially puts the English in the bubbles. Any English text, be it character dialogue, sound effects, etc., that's the work of a letterer. While Alex and Andrew both worked on several of the new volumes, neither of them were very familiar with the series. They each tried to keep things consistent with the old volumes, and fortunately for Alex, there weren't a lot of callbacks to earlier volumes. Even though they both worked on the same batch of volumes, they weren't necessarily working together directly because of all of the steps involved. Here's how Alex Keller Nelson described the translation process. Generally, the translator gets the raw files first. Then, of course, they translate the book according to the publisher's style guide. The script is then given to the letterer, who puts the text on the page. The editor will go over this first draft, leaving comments and questions about phrasing, checking for mistranslations, etc. Then it comes back to the translator to address each comment. The letterer applies the changes, and it's set up to QC, or quality checking. Typically, a deadline for all of this is three to four weeks, plus a couple of days for QC. Once QC comments are addressed, the final draft is uploaded and, in this case, sent off to the Japanese publisher for final QC. This typically takes around a month to get to the localizing team, who addresses any comments, and then the whole thing is done. Side note, quality checkers, or QCers, are responsible for ensuring that things are consistent from page to page. They review things like typesets, spelling, grammar, font size, alignment, etc to make sure that every page of the manga is formatted correctly. For School Rumble fans, this is probably the best outcome that they could have hoped for. Not only was the translation completed, but all of the older and now very out of print volumes were re-released digitally. But there are still some lingering questions. Firstly, what made Kodansha change their minds about licensing the series? Kodansha USA made it pretty clear that they weren't interested in the series and that they didn't even have the rights to publish it. So what changed? I think that there were two major factors in Kodansha's change of course, and both of them were addressed when they were answering an anonymous fan's question in February 2016. The market is finally recovering at a healthy pace, but in print at least, it makes more sense to dedicate our resources to new series rather than rescuing titles left unfinished by other publishers. Sorry. The first factor is the state of the manga market in North America. After peaking in 2007, the manga market had stagnated in the late 2000s and early 2010s, and the 2008 financial crisis certainly didn't help. But by 2016, things had started to turn around and people were buying manga again. The second factor is digital distribution. They even specifically mentioned that they wouldn't be dedicating resources to older titles in print. While total ebook sales in North America were trending downwards, and print books still dramatically outsell their digital counterparts, when it comes to re-releasing older properties, ebooks still present an interesting opportunity. The most obvious advantage of only selling an ebook is all the costs with printed books that you naturally avoid. Things like printing, packaging, shipping, inventory management, books being damaged and processing returns. But it also allows you to release a large number of books very quickly. And that's what Kodansha decided to do with several of Del Rey Manga's former titles, according to Alex Keller Nelson. When the company that they worked for was initially contacted by Kodansha, School Rumble wasn't the only project that they were offered. There were several former Del Rey manga series as well. Alex and their colleagues weren't given a lot of time to complete the project, and they were pushed to complete the last several volumes quickly. Here are a couple of examples. The translation of Volume 19 began on December 1st, 2016, and was released on April 25th, 2016. 
The translation of Volume 22 was finished in May of 2017, with Final QC being completed in July. It was released the next month, on August 15, 2017. When I asked Alex why they thought Kodansha decided to revive the series, they said, No idea. My guess would be it was just low-hanging fruit on their initial digital push. And I don't disagree. Since I wasn't able to get in contact with Kodansha or Del Rey, I can't provide you with an official reason, but here's my best guess. Kodansha wanted to expand their digital offerings and decided to use their backlog of previously licensed but incomplete manga. First, they would re-release the old volumes digitally. This would not only make it easier for new fans to start reading, but it would also entice old fans to buy them as well. It would also help to create interest in some of these old series again, which can improve the sales of the new volumes whenever they were eventually translated and released, once they bolstered their library. They can package up their titles and list them on digital rental services like Amazon Unlimited, which launched in 2014. And since they would all be ebooks, this is a fairly low cost and low risk investment with the opportunity to be fairly profitable over time. That's all I have for you all today, and I hope you enjoyed it. If any of you were following the manga industry in the late 2000s and early 2010s, I'd be curious to hear how you feel about Delray Manga and Kodansha. Are there any other Delray Manga properties that you'd like to see re-released? Let me know in the comments, or you could just talk about School Rumble, that's cool too. As for when my next video is coming out, I have no idea. But if you were to subscribe and hit the notification bell, you'll be notified whenever it does. Thank you all for watching.